So you might have already seen some of the gaming reviews that are telling you that the 5080 is not worth buying. But what about creators? Because the 5080 has some very interesting things going on in there, especially the media engines. We're going to be comparing it to probably something that the others didn't compare to. And while testing this 5080, I actually found some very interesting things that I haven't seen other people talk about. So here comes a tech notes as take of the 5080. This part of the video is brought to you by Asus ProArt PX13, the ultimate two-in-one creator laptop with AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU. The PX13 is one of the most compact and powerful 13-inch laptops out there. Create smarter and faster from anywhere with AI features and military-grade toughness. Go check out our full overview in the video description below. Now, the the 5080 shares a lot of the features with the 5090 and I highly recommend you go check out my 5090 review because I'm going more in detail about certain features and I don't want to repeat myself in this video. Now by the time you're watching this the 5080 should be launched and you should be able to buy it and I highly recommend checking out the latest pricing in the video description below but please do let me know in the comments how much does it cost for you because it should cost around thousand dollars but is that the reality? I can't tell you for now but you can actually correct me in the comment section below so please do that. I want to start with the specs. You might be saying, and probably Nvidia is saying, you shouldn't be comparing the 4080 Super with the 5080 because there's 4080 and 4080 Super. But I'm going to do it anyway because the 4080 Super is a thousand dollar MSRP card and the 5080 is the same one. The 4080 is discontinued, you can't buy it really. And the only card you can buy is 4080 Super, so there's no point of comparing it to a card get that kind of doesn't exist. So under the specs, you see 4080 Super here, 5080 and 5090. Looking at the process node, you can see that all of these cards share exactly the same TSMC N4 special process which means that it's not gone smaller. They can't pack any more transistors as the previous one, which they actually have done, by the way. Now, looking at the die size, because that's very interesting here, the 4080 Super is slightly bigger die size than the 5080 Super. And that's the same with transistors. The 4080 Super actually has a few more transistors than the 5080. I don't know what was happening. Maybe Nvidia actually tested the three nanometer one or Apple bought all the three nanometer transistor or the, you know, chips or Nvidia didn't have any in there or they had a lot of four nanometer left allocation that they already committed to TSMC. I don't know why they did use the four nanometer on the GPUs anyway. My guess is that they really locked on AI features and AI performance in terms of frame generation for gamers, which we're not going to be talking about, but also AI generation for obviously creators. So that means that you don't really need to talk about performance, but software kind of features, because in terms of under the hood, it's the same engine. It doesn't, as you can see, the same die size. You're not going to have any more transistors. What's really going to change? But there are a few things that actually changed. CUDA cores, as you can see, we've got 5% more CUDA cores with less transistors. Well, how does that work? You let me know in the comment section below. We've got 5% more tensor cores and RT cores. Our memory type now is GDDR7. That's gonna be probably the secret of this performance here. Faster memory, same capacity, 16 gigabytes, same memory bus, but the bandwidth, because it's faster, is now 960 gigabytes per second, which is 30% faster. The L1 cache and L2 cache, exactly the same. And the TDP, a little bit higher as well, 360 watts. If you compare the 5080 to 5090, you can see that the 5090 is literally double the size. Even the die size is pretty much exactly double the size. CUDA cores, double. Everything is double. Even the memory is double. So it kind of makes sense in terms of pricing. The 5090, 5080 is literally a half of what you're going to be paying for. And you get half the core counts, half the downsides, half of everything. Now the 5080 that I'm testing is the Palette Gaming Pro 16 gigabytes 5080. If you want to see like more dimensions and things, go check out our unboxing when we go a little bit more in detail about this and the card specifications. But this is an OC card, which means that 
it's probably a little bit more expensive than the MSRP cards. I'm running a 12900K platform and I'm using DDR4. I'm using the Asus Strix Z690A motherboard, which is probably one of the best DDR4 motherboard for the Intel's 12, 13, 14th gen. I'm using 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 megahertz DDR4. I'm using Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. We're using Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte for the main OS operating system. And we've got a 1200 watt Be Quiet power supply. If you want to check out all my test mentioned up, it's linked in the video description below. Now the cards that we will be testing here are the 4080 Super, which is the Pro Art, the Pilot 5080, then AMD Radeon 7900 XDX, which is the Power Color variant, and then the Founders Edition RTX 50. 90. In Geekbench 6, firstly, we can see that the 5080 is about 5% faster in OpenCL scores, which kind of is on par with the CUDA cores that we're seeing, but about 23% faster in Vulkan scores. So maybe Vulkan likes faster memory. That kind of makes sense in there because we had about 30% faster bandwidth of the RAM. The 7900 XDX is slower than the 4080 Super in terms of OpenCL and 16% faster in the Vulkan. The 5090 is about 34 to 35% faster than the 5080 on Vulkan and OpenCL scores. So not quite double the performance on OpenCL, but let's take a look at some of the benchmarks here. And we'll look at Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. There are certain features in Photoshop that can utilize GPU and the same in Lightroom Classic. There are some AI features that can utilize the GPU. In these special specific GPU applications, the 5080 will most likely be better, especially in the AI task than the 4080 Super. But this test doesn't only do the AI benchmarks. It kind of does everything to showcase how good is this application with this hardware. We're not testing something like the AI denoise on Lightroom Classic or some of the AI features in Photoshop or some of the GPU accelerated effects and filters. Well, some of them get accelerated actually, but not all of them. So if you go with a very specific test, then you can show that one card is better than the other, like the 5080 is better than the 4080 Super. But that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show you the overall performance. If you plug this card into your system, what you're gonna be doing, what most people are gonna be doing, are you gonna see any difference in there? That's what we're gonna be seeing in here in general score. In Photoshop, we can see that the 5080 is about 3% faster than the 4080 Super, but it's still slightly slower than the AMD card and about the same as the 5090. So in Photoshop, having the better GPU really doesn't matter to you. In Lightroom Classic, the 5080 is actually about 14% slower than the 4080 Super. Now, is it because of the compatibility, driver issues or something else? I don't know. Bear in mind, this is not just a single test I did. This is an average of multiple, at least four tests in Lightroom Classic. Some of the Premiere Pro and other benchmarks can go up to eight times to see the average. So the 5080 is not really shining here, even though it is a little bit faster than the 5090. It could be because of the clock speeds or something else. For photo editing, the 5080 really doesn't make any difference. But like I said, in certain specific effects or certain specific things what it can do in an application, it might be better depending on your workflow if you need that. Now, moving on to video editing. And before we can look at the benchmarks, we have to talk about the media engines because the media engines are one of these things that might make you want to swap from 4080 Super to 5080. Hopefully you're not going to do that because that kind of doesn't really make sense and it's not worth a thousand dollars. What I'm trying to say is the media engines are revolutionary. Go check out the 5090 review when I'm going more in depth about it. But now we have special hardware accelerated support for 10-bit codecs and 422, H.264 and 5, which will absolutely change your video editing workflow if you're using those codecs, whether encoding or decoding. The 4080 has two decoders and two encoders, whereas the 5090 has three encoders and two decoders. So you're losing only one encoder on the 4080 compared to the 5090. The interesting thing is, even the laptop variants of these GPUs have exactly the same codex. So a 5090 laptop one has the same encoders and decoders, three and two, and the 4080 two and two. This is a huge performance improvement, and you're gonna see that in Adventure Resolve in a minute. But as always, Adobe being slow as they always are, they're not so fast rolling out support for all of this hardware, which means that now, right now, 
for this benchmark, they're not going to be utilizing all of these media engines on the 5080. And what you're going to be seeing is basically just a little bit of a faster card or a card that's not fully utilized in its full potential what it can do if you want to see the updated results hit that subscribe button when it rolls out in premiere pro we're going to check how much faster it is and if it's worth upgrading we've seen that the 58 is roughly about 4.8 percent faster in the extended overall score which is not bad because about 5% improvement in CUDA cores and about 1.3% faster in the standard overall scores. As you can see, long GOP is only 4% faster, but that's where we actually bottleneck in. It should be a lot faster, which we'll see in DaVinci Resolve. The AMD 7900 XDX is slower than the 4080 Super in Premiere Pro. And then the 5090 and 5080 right now, roughly not a massive difference. The 5090 is only about 5% faster in the standard overall score and about 1.6% faster in the extended overall score. Now, is it worth getting the 5080 for Premiere Pro? Right now, I would probably get the 4080 unless you're doing these specific codecs, then I would go with the 5080, but you gotta act fast because most likely it's gonna be sold out because of all the AI, what's going out there. Looking at After Effects, the 5080 is about 1% faster than the 4080 Super. Really no difference there, about 2.5% faster in the GPU scores. You're never gonna notice that. And in terms of 5090, as you can see, not a massive difference in terms of the performance of all of these cards anyway. In After Effects, you're much more bottlenecked by RAM capacity and CPU. Certain things are GPU accelerated, but that's gonna be the main thing for you. Looking at DaVinci Resolve, and this is a pre-release DaVinci Resolve that actually supports all of the media engines inside and to actually see how much better this is. And here we can see that the 5080 is about 23% faster in the standard overall score and about 17.3% faster in the extended overall score. Now, how is it possible that it performs better even though the hardware is only 5% more cores but we're about 23 percent faster in the standard overall score that's ridiculous if you look at the long gop score which is h264 and 5 and now we can see those media engines absolutely flying 67.7 percent faster than the 4080 super that is massive that's absolutely huge. Even the GPU effects about 20% faster. Long GOP extended 47% faster. And finally, the AI score only 3.9% faster. Not a massive difference at all. But this is a seriously impressive gap between the 4080 Super and then 5080 because the application can actually utilize fully all of what it can do. Looking at the AMD card, obviously it's slower in most of the cases than the 4080 Super, but the 5080 is better in every single aspect, especially the AI score, which is almost double compared to the AMD score. The 5090 is about 11 to 12% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. Not a huge difference in rest of the scores apart from the GPU effects, which is roughly about 53% faster and the AI score that is about 14% faster. Now, in terms of DaVinci Resolve, the 5080 makes sense. It makes a ton of sense. In fact, the scores are amazing and in terms of 5090, you're not gonna get that much more performance and the 5080 looks are a lot better bang for buck, unless you need more than 60 gigabytes of VRAM. There's one more thing about the encoders and decoders that I found. For some reason, I am seeing three decoders on Task Manager on the 5080, which kind of puzzles my head because even the 5090 doesn't have three decoders, there's three encoders. Why does the Task Manager show three decoders. I don't know. Let's take a look at 3D performance. This is tested with the Blender 3.6 because if I tested Blender 4 or a 4 onwards, it's actually slower than 3.6. After Blender 4.0, there's some kind of a caching feature on the GPU, which makes the GPUs slower than on the previous one. So I'm going to have to keep testing the GPUs on Blender 3.6. And now we can see the RTX 5080 is about 4% faster in the monster scene, 30% faster in the juke shrimp scene, and about 5% faster in the classroom scene. Kinda in correlation with the previous generation and the AI doesn't really give you anything extra in here. Obviously the AMD card gets absolutely slaughtered here and the RTX 5090 
is an extra 29 to 42% faster, possibly even more. Octane Bench is not supported yet on the 50 series, the support comes out very very soon the same with redshift and maybe some of your programs that you're going to be using as well but another thing we can look at is the v-ray the cuda score for some mind-boggling way is 22.6 percent faster than the 4080 super that's ridiculous the rtx score is nine percent faster than the 4080 super the 5080 outperforms its specs which is very very interesting Obviously, the 5090 now compared to the 5080 is extra 53 to 63% faster, which kind of makes sense here in V-Ray as well. Now, it's not double the performance for twice the price, so 50% faster kind of makes sense. Now, talking about the power draw, the 5080 pulls 360 watts in Fermac which is about 12% faster than the 4080 Super, which was 320 watts. So as you can see, they've upped the power and the efficiency hasn't actually gained any better. We're using quite a bit more power. And because this is an OC card, we can actually get even more power from it. If maxing out the power input in MSI Afterburner, I could see the 5080, this pallet card, pull around 300 and. 80 watts which is quite a lot and i wouldn't recommend you doing that as a creator because you're not going to get better power efficiency and the actual rendering score really doesn't matter to you so my question is what exactly does this oc mean here are we getting better clock speeds at the same power package i don't know in conclusion what do i think about the 5080 now the 5080 is half of 5090 in terms of price and in some of the programs you're getting more than half the 5090 performance which means that the 5080 kind of makes more sense than the 5090 unless you need the vram capacity and so on so in 3d applications if you need a good renderer the 5080 is a better buy for half the price than the 5090 in terms of 5080 compared to the 4080 super in 3d i don't think it makes sense most likely the 5080 is going to be more expensive than the 4080 super and I would go with a 4080 Super. Better value for your money, pulls less power and can be smaller like this Pro Art. Plus, if you go with a Pro Art, an effortless plug here, the Pro Art offers you three months for free Adobe Creative Cloud as well, which makes this card up to $180 cheaper than whatever you're paying for it. So bang for buck for 3D, I think is 4080 Super. In DaVinci Resolve, as you can see, the 5080 is outperforming what it should do compared to 4080 Super. And if you're building a new PC, probably go with a 5080. If you're upgrading from very old one, you might find the better bang for work with the 4080 Super depending on the pricing. But looks like the 5080 is worth it for video editors just because of the media engines. When you put these media engines going, the performance is absolutely insane. We can get over 60% performance increase when using those media engines. And that is not talking about rendering and exporting. Because of the dual encoders, you could get a lot better performance if we can utilize all of this. And I highly ask Adobe, to please speed up the process for providing support for this because I would love to see this in Premiere Pro and we're going to do the test when it's fully supported in Premiere Pro. In photo editing, obviously it's not worth it. Now, general conclusion, the gamers aren't really wrong. There is not that much difference compared to the 4080 Super unless you're doing video editing then you're seeing a lot better performance than the 4080 Super. We can see up to 60% improvement in long GOP scores as you saw in DaVinci Resolve, which is kind of impressive. Now, if you want to buy it, check it out in the video description below. And if you're thinking, goodness me, this is so expensive, go check out my build guides in the video description below. They'll be updated. You will get to build yourself the best bank for board creator PC, what I think is the best value for your money. So go save your money, go build some of those PCs that I've got linked below. And if you want to reach out and you've got specific workflow questions, I always get back to my Minec messages in 24 hours. Linked in the description below as well. Thank you guys. I'll meet you in the comment section below. Bye-bye.